The Zone Coverage Podcast Network. They may be drinkers, Robin, but they're also human beings. Hell yeah, let's get Stinko. This is the Giles and the Goalie Podcast as part of the Zone Coverage Podcast Network. With your hosts, Giles Farrell and Ben Remington. Welcome to the Giles and the Goalie podcast. I am your host, Giles Farrell. That over there is Ben Remington. Hello. Uh, We have a little bit of a different show for you today. Uh, Ben and I are joined uh, by uh, by a couple friends. Uh, There may be more. We generally we genuinely don't know at this point, but. Uh, there may be a fifth joining the broadcast, uh, but uh, we're we're trying to mix it up a little bit uh, and just kind of do something a little bit lighter. Uh, this is just kind of something where a bunch of dudes gather around, uh, you know, that what normally would be under circumstances be it, gather around the the table or whatever, fire whatever. Uh, have some beer, talk sports, but we have to do this over the internet because of social distancing. Uh, so uh, we're, we're we're just trying this out uh, just to to have some fun because honestly we're gonna run out of things to talk about uh, without live sports happening. So it doesn't hurt to try a few things. Uh, we are going to debate uh, the ten most influential athletes in the history of Minnesota sports. Is that, that right? I know the word athletes was key. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I would say influential or important, however you want to phrase it. Um, either way, I guess would, would be safe to, to say, I, I, I mean, you can debate these things to the end of time, but inter- influential or important, whichever. The, the crux of the list was based off of my tweet a few weeks ago where I said Kevin Garnett was the most important athlete in the history of Minnesota sports, uh, to which many people liked and a lot more disliked and still at me about. (laughs) Uh, So appropriately, I'm uh, wearing a Kevin Garnett jersey in the recording of this podcast uh, because I'm going to defend that take in a little bit, but... (laughs) Uh, we do have uh, uh, some friends joining us here. Uh, we're first joined by uh, noted longtime Timberwolves fan slash historian Sam. Hi, Sam. Hello. Thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, Sam is wearing the best Timberwolves jersey of all time, which is the black uh, jersey from the Kevin Garnett era that has the trees outlining the uniform. Of course. So, Hell yeah. go figure. Uh, we are also joined by uh, my friend Eric, who is just a very, very knowledgeable sports person who hails from Chicago. Chi Town, represent. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> How's it going? You didn't have to flash the gang signs. <laughs> they can't see that, Eric. I guess I'm only talking to you guys. Yeah, so they it can't, matter. Can't Nobody see else that. can see it. <laughs> um, yeah. So just real quick, my, my idea for this show, we, we talk about the wild all season long. And as, as we've outlined many, many times, that's really hard to do. Um, it's really hard to talk about the wild as much as we do, but we do it because, uh, you know, there's stuff to talk about and, and people enjoy it. Um, but what people also enjoy is when we drink <laughs> and so, uh, especially Giles. And so my idea was to kind of have a podcast, and I think I'm, I'm going to kind of subtitle this the Off the Rails podcast, because we've all had several, several, several alcoholic beverages at this point, and we're going to get around and talk about Minnesota sports on a broader spectrum, not just the Minnesota Wild. Um, <laughs> seeing as how it's the top 10 athletes, I don't know that we'll mention the Minnesota Wild at all, come to think of it. No. But, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to have a podcast that was – a little bit off the beaten path, a little bit off the rails for us, have some fun, 
Um, I know we did a, a great podcast with Bruce this past week, and that was awesome. And if you're a new fan, uh, welcome very much to the show. This is not typical of us, but <laughs> we, we uh, so <laughs> wanted to change things up a little bit. We wanted to have a little bit of fun and uh, make something a little bit lighter and make something a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, uh, exciting. And, um, you know, so we, we involved alcohol, we involved Minnesota sports, and we involved our friends, which is a pretty a pretty good combination in my book. <laughs> It's an explosive combination. That that too, yes, that too. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't know where to go with this. Well, I can I can start. I so what we'll do is typically I make the list and people crap on it, and and that's fine. And and that was that was a good uh, formula for uh, for the previous episodes we did. This one I wanted to foster a little more fun debate. So. We're going to just build the list for, you know, a composite list with all of us just sitting right here. Um, so when you do that, you kind of have to start from the top down. So unfortunately, we won't be counting from 10 to 1, which is a little bit more exciting. Um, but I think counting 1 to 10 is is fun, too, uh, when you get into the debates of where p- kind of people slot in. You, you have to you kind of have to start at the top. Otherwise, it ends up kind of being a weird, uh, you get kind of a weird leapfrog effect on some players. So. Um, we'll start with number one, and, and as Giles mentioned, he wholeheartedly uh, endorses Kevin Garnett as the number one, the most important athlete <laughs> in sports history. And uh, I'm not saying that he's 100% wrong, because I think Kevin Garnett is extremely important in Minnesota sports history, and I think it's a very short list um, as far as adding value to their franchises, as far as getting people interested in their prospective franchises. But for me personally, I don't see how this list doesn't start with Kirby Puckett. We agreed that there's one, there's two, and then there's just a a just a giant chasm. Gap. Yeah. yeah, chasm. Yeah. That's the word I'm looking. For. I, I third I third that. I think. I mean, there's no way you could you could say anything about Minnesota sports without starting with Kevin Garnett or Kirby Puckett. I mean, although. We'll come back to three later because I have many opinion on three. Uh, <laughs> as I wave my finger so much. Um, I just think that Kirby, and and I don't know, Giles, you're a, a touch younger than me, but um, like just the... I'm the actually general... in my 20s if you listen to the last Russo podcast. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, but I, I just think that the, the general... Uh, hype around Kirby in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s around here, I think it surpasses that of Kevin Garnett in the late 90s, early 2000s. And, you know, I hate to be that guy because I hate people that pull this card all the time, but you got to talk titles. I mean, Kirby brought two World Series here. The biggest argument right there, yeah. He kind of of carried that team on his back a little bit. The Game 6 home run, um, all the stuff he did, you know, kind of winning a Hall of Fame on, on that resume alone. Uh, even though his career was shortened, I, I just think that Kirby is, is the guy. And I will say it's close, but I, I just feel like Kirby's the guy. Well, we we agreed that Kevin Garnett and Kirby Puckett were like one, two, and they're, they're interchangeable. But I'm arguing Kevin Garnett is number one uh, for – for a whole list of reasons. Uh, first of all, number one, uh, basketball is more centered around the individual. You know whether you want to admit that or not. Uh, the NBA is uh, very much uh, more so centered around uh, you know the the star player, which you know we've we've talked about a lot on this podcast, just based on how they they market their sport and very rightfully how they market their sport. I mean, at the same time, it's like, I mean, I'm going to let you finish real quick, but it's like, <laughs> like Taylor, Taylor, the, the NBA, I know, right? The NBA though, I feel like while it's a, like you, you center your team around the single player, but you're, you you're more likely need... to win because of a single player more so than that, like in baseball, you, but you like baseball, I mean, like yeah. you need those star players in order to win. Yeah. You, you well, still I mean, need out. It's a, yeah, it's a good argument. You still need the peripheral players in basketball, which is also going to come into play here in in a few minutes, right. uh, to to have a a winning winning team. But 
basketball very more so is, you know, it's about the individual. I mean, you want to look more recently, like look at what, like LeBron James, like the dude jumps around from team to team and they're just instantly good because he's just so damn good. Agreed. And, you know. And Kevin Garnett's the only person we've had that's even close to that. Look at Kevin Love. Look at Carl Anthony Towns. Oh, Kevin Love, like, took the team. Kevin Love. Kevin, that team was nothing when win. Kevin Love got there. They didn't win anything with him, though. It, like, it, no. Kevin Garnett, real bad. I mean, you could say they didn't win anything with Kevin Garnett yeah. either. There's Every a year. very, well, very... Well, they didn't make the playoffs with Kevin Love. Right. Yeah. True, right. Exactly. Okay. There's a very large chasm when it comes to players in Timberwolves history because you have Kevin Garnett and then a chasm. And yeah. then you can debate who comes in at two. But... Yeah. The fact that he made us relevant for um, a damn a decade, decade. basically, with uh, the fact that our front office and our owner were like uh, not trying to, but they were putting that drilling the team into the ground. You know all the Glenn Taylor stuff and the fact that the front office didn't make until KG was already in his late twenties. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Kevin Garnett made the Wolves relevant for a decade, and I actually a while back I. I tweeted this like the Wolves in the eight seasons they made the playoffs with Kevin Garnett. They had a 586 win percentage in the regular season. In all other seasons combined, the Minnesota Timberwolves have a 332 winning percentage in the regular season. And that's so bad. Yeah, that's terrible. Like, and keep in mind who was on the team when we were when we were winning all those games. Like I, right. I watched uh, the 2004 playoffs. Irving yeah. Johnson was our starting center. Yeah. We watched. You guys remember that? Ago, we watched that game where they beat the Bulls for the first time, and <laughs> and Cherokee Parks was in the starting lineup, and he was getting torched in that game. Well, Cherokee Parks. Cherokee uh, Luke Longley. Yeah. Yeah. So Luke Longley, Luke Longley's okay. terrible. We, right, that's we, not we even. Went, we went come on, we all know Luke Longley's terrible. We can't mention that. We went down <laughs> our head. Okay, but the, my argument is, no <laughs> player has Kevin been Gardner more. Was scoring on Tony Kukoc. He doesn't play deep. He doesn't play defense ever. You'll no. see that on Sunday, guys, if you watch the last dance. Ooh, looking forward to that. So uh, my <laughs> argument is, Kevin Garnett has meant more to the Wolves than any other player has meant to. Uh, their team in this state because one if Kevin Garnett didn't turn out to be the player he was or if say the Wolves have another draft foul and don't pick him at all the Uh Wolves probably aren't here they probably move another team out of Minnesota that's fair a lot of the Lakers Uh, and the fact that Kevin Garnett still did what he did here, despite you know, Kevin McHale trying to sign Joe Smith to under the table contracts, <laughs> or Glenn Taylor just being so intrusive to the team that it just causes this disruption, or you know, the, the fact that Kevin Garnett really did what he did without any kind of good supporting cast until. That 2004 season uh, speaks to the level of truly how good he is and how impactful he was here. And if you if you disagree that he you know didn't mean that much, then go back to when the Wolves acquired him in 2015 at yeah. the trade deadline and yeah. that first game back. Don't don't ever try to tell me it didn't mean that much because. For the first time in how long, the Wolves sold out a game, and really, it felt genuinely wonderful to be at a Wolves game again for the first time in, what, 15 years? Like, Uh. if you could actually say it to someone, you're going to the Wolves game tonight, and it was actually a cool, noted thing to be doing. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. He is the most important player to his team. To the Wolves, right? Yeah. Exactly. In Minnesota sports history. I'll, I, I'm not going to disagree with that. No. Nope. Because I don't think that Kirby was the most important. By, by as much of a margin, Kirby wasn't as important to the Twins. To the state, to the sports scene, I still believe Kirby to be more important because 
again, he won titles, but it was be it was also at the time, and, and Dick Bramer has made mention of this. People have made mention of this. We were too young for it. This was back when Minnesota was known as a as a state with teams that could not win a thing. You know, this is four Super Bowl losses in, and 1987 happens, and they finally win something at, in a state where they hadn't had a title since the Minneapolis Lakers in the 50s. And so I still feel like Kirby is more important to Minnesota sports, even though I will absolutely agree with you. Kevin Garnett I mean, yeah. is the most important player to his individual Minnesota sports franchise, and it's not close. It has to come down to those titles. Like, it has to – I mean, that's the, that's the complete argument. I mean, you look at the history – like what uh, Ben just said, you look at the history of what Minnesota sports is, what Minnesota sports was. I mean, like, has a team been to a title – I've been been to a championship game since yeah. Kirby. No, no. And, and say it. it's like championships. I mean, they right. end. They, I mean, they end with Kirby Puckett. Yeah. They end with Kirby Puckett. I think yeah. for Kirby, at the end of the day, it's about uh, your age, right? Yeah. So I think like I'm I'm old enough to remember '91, but I was five years old. You know, so right? Yeah, same I don't here. really. True. And so also. Back then, wasn't baseball the most popular sport still, or one maybe? It was, yeah. I mean, until the, until the strike in '94, definitely. I yeah. guess the NBA was pretty big because of Magic and Jordan, and then now in this, these last couple of decades, the NBA is definitely more popular around people our age and younger, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And so I think that's also a big part of it. Like people my age and younger are probably going to say KG more time. Basketball was more prominent. Yeah, we watch it more. We, we pay attention, like yeah, we like the twins, but they they break hearts every year, right? But, <laughs> I mean, I mean, and that's and that's for me, somebody who didn't grow up in Minnesota, to argue against. So I do, right. I do concede you guys are on something with the with the championships. And I mean, like for me, somebody who didn't live in Minnesota, I mean, like you sit there and look at these two people, like me and my dad. Like my my dad told me about like story, like my dad told me about Kirby Puckett. You know, like you know, me growing up, it was kind of like. Kirby Puckett was a bit, I mean, it helped, you know, I had family growing up in Atlanta too. So that world series kind of, you know, <laughs> twist the knife a little bit, you know, <laughs> but it's kind of like that 91 world series was, a, was a big deal. And my dad was such a huge baseball fan. Like I grew up watching baseball, like what you're saying, Sam, like, you know, back in the day, baseball was such a big deal. You know, yeah. somebody who didn't, is not from Minnesota. Like, you know, I kind of just oh. moved into like all these sports. I'll, I'll ask you this, Eric, being a guy from Chicago, you know, Kirby was from, you know, the projects in Chicago. Was he a big deal in Chicago? Or, or do you not really remember? It, yeah, part? it's kind of, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of tough to like really think about like. What the fuck, yeah. cat? Frank Thomas has got to be more of the. Oh, yeah, it's kind of like when you think of, when oh, you think of sure. Chicago legends, I mean, yeah, Frank Thomas, sure. as far as baseball, like he was. Yeah, but I mean, Kirby was from there, so that has to, I mean, he had to have. Even though I'm nah. sure White Sox and Twins fans, you know, don't really get along particularly, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we don't have the White Sox here, right? True. <laughs> Not every state celebrates their own like Minnesota does. Well, that's true. That's, that's true. Very true. Well, that's also because you don't have the championships to celebrate, so you just kind of grasp <laughs> onto people who you have. It's like, oh yeah, he's uh, from Minnesota, even though he's only here for like six years. Yeah, that stings, Eric. But you're right. Like, it, don't get me wrong, like, I totally factored, like, Kirby's accomplishments and everything he did for the Twins into my my take. It's just that, you know, not to put him down, but in both championships the Twins won, Kirby Puckett was not the most valuable player. That's true. Nope. I mean, he had the Game 6 homer, but obviously... Right. You think of 91, you think of Jack Morris, obviously. And you know what? what? Honestly, that was one of my arguments against Kirby. It was kind of like Kirby, Kirby was a great player. Kirby had so many all-star appearances. You know, he was – everybody knew him as such a great player. But then you sit there and you look at um, Garnett, and he's like, yeah, he won MVP. He won yeah. Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, Kevin Garnett was – you know, he was actually a great player. Not to say that Kirby wasn't a great player, but it was like, – Right. right, exactly. Question. Kirby's a Hall of Famer. If we yeah, Garnett's not there yet. Hall of Famer, obviously, too. I'm not saying right. they're both Hall of Famers, that, you know, but the MVP is one thing. I don't know. Did I, I may not remember this, but did Garnett ever have a meal at McDonald's themed after him like Kirby Puckett did? <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. 
What's up? We did a list called most iconic players in Minnesota sports history. Kirby would be number one easy, right? Just iconic. Uh, I, like, I, I, I think it'd be the same argument. Yeah. Oh, it'd be. It's. It's all. I think it'd be the same argument. Influential, okay. important, iconic. I think you can kind of lump it all together. Well, okay. Um, if you said, if you said iconic, I think if you said iconic, instead of like important, I think if you said iconic uh, Minnesota athletes, Randy Moss gets put in the top three. I think he might be in the top three anyway, but that's another story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Fair, I think if you go iconic, in my top three. <laughs> I, I, think like I think if you go influential, maybe you do go Kevin Garnett because I think mean, there's a lot of kids who played basketball because of Kevin Garnett. Well, I, like, think, I, think, I think I think Giles made a valid here. I think he made a valid argument. I love I love Giles's argument. What he said, I think no, I, I think if it wasn't for Kevin Garnett coming to the Minnesota Timberwolves, they might not be here. Maybe exactly. But it's like the same. It's like the same argument when you sit there and you talk they'd about be, they'd be the renamed Charlotte Hornets, right? <laughs> New Seattle team, another iteration, right? No, <laughs> but it, I think it's the same argument when you talk about LeBron versus Michael. Like you say, like who's the best, and then you know the old yeah. people like me go like, oh, who's You're the best? Hair. Six I, rings, hair. six for six. What's up? Yeah, and 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 I think I think you know Giles touched on it. We both touched on. It. I think it's one and two, and then it's not really particularly close after that. No. So. And again, um, our age comes into it because I'm sure there's oh, some sure. farmers out there. Sure. I think anybody older than us, or targeting older, older is going to say Kirby ten times out of ten. I think anybody younger than us is going to say Kevin Garnett, maybe you know, until you get too young. Um, but we're right at that right at that precipice where we barely remember how big of a deal Kirby Kirby Puck it was. Mm-hmm. But we very much remember how big of a deal uh, Kevin Garnett was. So, so here's, people here's, are just, we're kind of caught in the middle. I had another argument for Kevin Garnett. Even though, in my mind, again, I think it's 1A, 1B, like we've been saying. Sure. Um, another argument for Garnett is Kirby, you can't say, like, in his position, he's not one of the best players in his position. No. Of true. all of baseball. You right. look at Kevin Garnett. I mean, Kevin Garnett, power forward. We're going to say power forward. Yeah, he's up Small there. forward, center. Okay. I mean, he was 7 1, 6 11, whatever you want to call it. Like, yeah. he was there. Are you going to say, like, he's one of the top five people you're going to talk about in that position? True. Kirby isn't. That's true. And you're not going to talk about that with Kirby. Like, in his true. position. Well, that goes back to what Giles was saying was, like, true. baseball is more – or basketball is more about the individual yeah. versus baseball. All right. Then, just... go back – those rings, baby. Those rings <laughs> count. All Championship right. count, man. I think, I think we've uh, – I think I'm, I'm willing to concede this to Giles – just because John Krasinski promised to listen to this. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I'll give Giles KG narrowly by the narrowest Ooh. of narrow margins over uh, for right now. Well, like, and, uh, uh, rings and, count. Uh, just, and Giles owes me one for later. So just, rings just, count. Just to make just remember that. Just to make a last point, it's like, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not, you know, dumb enough to not understand like the impact Curry Puckett had. Like yeah, no, he, I know you. I know you're not. When he died in 2006, like uh, that was that was yeah. one of the worst days, like yeah, I can recall. <laughs> and you know, just as a Minnesota sports fan, like you know, I've studied oh. Twins history for for so long. Like his impact is never lost on me, nor will ever be. It, it just there's just this like inferiority complex when it comes to the wolves in this town. It's like everyone, everyone ate up the wolves when they were good and relevant in the Garnett years. And it has been so long since they've been good and relevant in the grand scheme of Minnesota sports. And it's just so much easier for people to stay in the closet and dunk on them. Yeah. Then rather go. Yeah. I love them in their in their heyday, but you know it, it's hard to watch now. Which yeah, sure. it's completely fair. It just nobody seems to be willing to admit that, and I, it just I, I can't overstate enough how how impactful he was, and just how great he was to watch. Like you know, maybe there is a little bit of bias in me because he was somebody I watched as a kid but yeah. you know and, and it, it's not 
I'm I'm a sucker for nostalgia. I'll just put that out there. <laughs> like so, it, it just it's so difficult to think of the wolves and not think of Kevin Garnett because, like I said, they have not been relevant without him, and they have never had a player anywhere close to uh, the level that he brought. And this is a team that has been consistently in the draft lottery. Yeah. I would agree. Okay, I think that's fair. I think... I got one more thing. What's up? Just, I, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention Kirby also had his career cut short. Right. You know, yeah, I think that, that plays part of it. Thing, yeah. like, if he kept playing longer and had like better career numbers, yeah. we have a better argument, too. That's not true. He never really cares at this time, right? You did know, you guys, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Did you guys know that Pat Mahomes pitched in the last game Kirby ever played? Really? Interesting. Just just throwing that out wow. there. For no reason <laughs> of my own. Other than the fact I love Dial, Pat Dial's Mahomes Dial's going to find a Pat Mahomes stat to add in there, isn't he? <laughs> Every show, Pat Mahomes. All right. all right, so we have KC number one. I think we can all agree then Kirby is a kind of a clear cut number two, right? I, I won't even count. I won't it's, even call him number two. I'll just say like one. It's like a one A, one B kind of thing. Yeah, one A, right. one B. Okay. All right. Your list, do whatever you want. So, <laughs> so that's the point of the podcast, Sam. Well, here we go. Uh, now we're going to really get into it. Yeah, yeah, so number three, I've got some names, and I don't know how deep we need to go with this. Well, should everyone give what they have, and then we can discuss uh, we can. I, I personally, I think I have a three through ten. That's yeah, what I well, have. Okay. What? What? <laughs> let's maybe let's maybe let's everyone go around and say who their number three is, and then we can kind of go from there. Okay. What do you got, Remy? I, I I think that this is a a spot for Randy Moss. Um, there there might be some other folks that you can definitely make some great arguments for, but. I think that Randy Moss to this day is still a very big deal in Minnesota. And that just kind of speaks to how important he was to Vikings fans and to the state. I mean, he's, he's so important that I don't hate him. Straight cash, homie. Exactly. Charles, what do you got? Um, uh, let, let's let the guests go first okay. and then I'll, I'll close it out. Cause I'm going to have the most hottest take. <laughs> Sam, who's your number three? I got Randy Moss, baby. All right. Great <laughs> yeah. No, I, what are your. You're making me rethink my number three right now. <laughs> we, well, that's okay. We, Who'd you I have? Just, right now. If you had Moss, that's fine. Well, no, right now, my number three is Joe Maurer. That, I think that's totally fair. And I think Joe Maurer, just because, I mean, when we're talking about important to Minnesota, <laughs> yeah. Homegrown, dude. Yeah. Yeah, and no. and he was a good player. I mean, like, yeah, Eric. It, yeah, it, it, to, it can't go in better, city. To make you feel better, I had him at four. So I think right. my three is totally fine. exactly my three four Moss and Mauer three four. Right, right, right. Exactly. I think it also tells everyone how old we are, though. And you know? yeah. this True. is why this is why Eric's my best man. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? <laughs> you got you got Mauer too, Giles? No, actually, oh. um, I I love Joe Mauer and. He's yeah. probably my number. Uh, I don't know. He's probably well, like we, in my top five. But gotta... my number three is Lindsey Whalen. Ooh. And I will. I will die on this hill. What? I I'm going to die on this hill. I'm you gonna are? just play. I, Lindsey Whalen. Her impact may not be completely measurable in the grand scheme of things. But let me let me try to say why. She made an otherwise irrelevant college basketball program at the University of Minnesota relevant at her time. They went to the Final Four, True. for crying out loud, and they held their own with the superpower Connecticut before they ended up losing in that semifinal. Diana Taurasi. Yeah, Giles, right. you know you have a you have a career in marketing. You know that, right? <laughs> like you're you're in the wrong you're in the wrong field. <laughs> <laughs> That's a debate for another day. Um, <laughs> she. By the she way, was... Lindsay Whalen was also my three four five. So okay, 
Uh, yeah. No, it, it, she she has been so good throughout her career, and the fortunate part of it is, and I, I kind of made the same argument with Neil Broughton last week. She did most of it in Minnesota, right? You know, yeah. she she made the U of M women's basketball program uh, relevant. You know, they've they've been pretty consistently you know good since she's been there. Like, they haven't been, like, you know, Final Four or anything, but no. they've still been really good, you know, for the most part. And then, you know, she played her first few years in the WNBA in Connecticut, and then once the Lynx, you know, drafted, I believe it was Maya Moore, then they mm-hmm. they traded for Lindsey Whalen, and, you know, they became a championship superpower. Championship one, championship two, right. championship three, championship four. The only professional championships in this state since the yep. Twins. Yep. And she has been the catalyst for that, that dynasty, uh, and just making them, you know, relevant, selling out Target Center in the playoffs. Like, you mm. know, I, I know... Uh, you know, women's basketball and women's sports, for that matter, is kind of an afterthought to some people. But the fact of the matter is, when you're selling out arenas like this, like that's not lost. And as I said, her impact may not be totally measurable because, you know, how will we ever know how many people, you know, someday will go? I love basketball and play basketball because I watch Lindsey Whalen play. It's more on a you know, kind of more of a women's sports kind of grand scheme of things, but yeah. Again, if I can, I walked up to Tommy, my girlfriend Tommy. I'm just like, hey, Lindsay Whalen. I mean, if she knows who Lindsay Whalen is and she doesn't follow sports at all, <laughs> it's kind of a big deal. Well, yeah. she's and I, she's Minnesota royalty, and right, honestly, like she. She deserves her place at number three just because, like, she has pretty much walked the walk in terms of playing professional sports and college sports in this town and making, you know, the links. Like, we had this argument earlier in the week in our group chat because, yep. uh, you know, just we were trying to get a feel for our list, but... The Lynx were otherwise not overly relevant until, like, Maya Moore and Lindsey Whalen, like, jumped into the scene. You know, argument that Katie Smith was the better overall Lynx player, but she didn't have the same kind of impact that Lindsey Whalen did. Yeah, okay. So I'll preface this by saying I absolutely believe Lindsey Whalen belongs on this list somewhere, and I don't want to discount that. I don't want to... You know, we, right. we talked about this with our list last week and women's sports and how the the, U, the University of Women's uh, Hockey Program is such a big deal because of, of what they've done. Right. Um, I think that Lindsay Whalen belongs on this list. I don't think she belongs as high. Simply, I mean, we're talking important. Uh, you walk up to the average Minnesotan and ask them to list off famous athletes. I don't know that Lindsay Whalen's name comes up. And, and, and I that's the important side well, it depends on who you ask. That's true, but but I think if you if you walk up to someone who follows the Vikings, Twins, Wild, and Wolves, um, unfortunately, it's probably a guy. Uh, not uh, as many women are, are going to follow sports as religiously as as all of our wives um, can tell you, mm-hmm. or, or significant others can tell you. <laughs> They're not as obsessive as we are. But I, I think that. Randy Moss's name comes up before Lindsey Whalen's does. And, and and that's not a sexist thing. That's just Randy Moss was a big deal. I mean, a really big deal. And, and you know, f- from the 98 Vikings, as, as big of a deal as they were to this state, um, to all the way through his career, I just, I'd think that he was a bigger deal to Minnesota sports fans than Lindsey Whalen was. Like, like you mentioned, Mentioned Katie Smith was pretty good. Maya Moore, incredible basketball player. Simone oh, Augustus. Maya, Maya Moore was amazing. Yeah. Uh, Maya Moore was the best player on that team. Simone Augustus was probably second. Um, there's a pretty strong argument. Maya Moore is on my list later, so I right. mean, we're not going to count Maya that Maya out. Is, is, you know, maybe even fourth best on the links when they won all those titles. 
not mm-hmm. discounting that. And she, you know, she was there. She's got the rings to prove it. And that's great. Yep. But it's not like she carried those teams. I, I hate to say it. I, I don't want to sound crass, but I don't know that those links teams necessarily needed her. It, she certainly helped and she was a good player and she was obviously very good at what she did playing point guard, but I don't know if those links teams needed her mm-hmm. as much as Randy Moss was insanely important to all the Vikings teams he played on. The Vikings teams that they made... also didn't win. Well, I mean, I mean, they made it to the <laughs> NFC championship game, but I mean like yeah. those, those Randy Moss games, I mean like, it's kind of like the same thing as Kirby as a uh, Kevin Garnett that we're saying. It's like they made, the Vikings a relevant team again it's like oh you know the Minnesota Vikings they're good you know but it's like football especially if you're talking about Kirby Puckett being like on a team sport like team dependent Mm -hmm. um sport man football I mean like you can't especially a wide receiver no offense to Randy I mean Randy I mean I watched that Thanksgiving game that first year (laughs) Thanksgiving game oh man let me tell you that had my whole family going crazy Those three, he caught what four balls for three touchdowns. Yeah, Come it was on, like, son. That. like that was crazy. Like uh, it's amazing, and everybody's everybody's gonna three remember. balls, three balls for three touchdowns. Three, I'm sorry, three balls for yeah. three touchdowns. For three balls, like 170 yards and three touchdowns, or something ridiculous like that. You're like it's something that's something that you're not gonna forget, but you can't and do you that know. without everybody else on your team. You can't do that without an offensive line. You can't do that without a quarterback who can get you the ball. Well, right, but but Lindsey Whalen can't team. win without Maya Moore, though, right? Well, right. That's what I'm saying. Like Lindsay, Lindsay Whalen was like well, maybe. She was the offensive line for that Lynx team. She was there and she was important. Yeah, but, but Lin- they needed every, all of them and the coach and you know. The, the, I feel like the, Lindsay Whalen. I feel like Lindsay Whalen proved who she was before she got into the cha- before she got to the pros. So oh. Lindsay Whalen proved who she was in high school. She proved who she was in college, especially for the University of Minnesota. Like Giles is saying, put that program on the map. Yeah, like, but he was, Lindsay, I mean, Janelle McCarville was pretty good too. Yeah. Okay. In college, it, it, it was it was like a one-two punch. It was like a almost like a Shaq and Kobe kind of thing. Okay. Right. Uh, so here's my arguments against Randy Moss. Is <laughs> don't get me wrong, like the Vikings, his first three years, like playoffs. Every year, like, two NFC title games, but both just ended in utter disaster. And after that, like, the Vikings kind of came bad. Like, they, I think they made the playoffs only once more in his time here, which, you know, that was very memorable because he mooned the fans at Lambeau Field. You know, I... <laughs> I will always, always think go. well of Randy Moss uh, for doing that and that alone. Like, he could have just been a completely pedestrian wide receiver, and I will always think well of him for doing that to Lambeau Field. Yeah, I, but, I just want to point out that Ben Remington is defending a member of the Minnesota Party. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. that is very important to note, Sam. <laughs> that is why I'm going to call that out right now. <laughs> like, that's how you know that I am talking, that I mean what I'm, I'm saying, because I am defending a member of the Vikings. <laughs> I, uh, and, and, and that's and the, that's kind of the crux of my argument is, you guys know damn well how much I hate the Vikings. It's because they're really effing important in this state. I think I think, if you, look at, I think if you look at it as far as like somebody who... It's not as if you're just looking at Minnesota in general from like an outside perspective. I got you, Ben. I got you. (laughs) I see it. Randy Moss. I see it. Okay. I think it's somebody, I think it's somebody from this state. And I mean, especially for somebody who's a little bit more in tune with the sports inside the state, I could see where Lindsey Whalen could creep up to that top. One of those like top spots. Yeah. Again, like, I, not to take away from Randy Moss because I do think he's in like the top five, but he's not my number three mm. because the Vikings have always been good. Like they've, I believe they've got the best winning percentage all time for a team to never win the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's true. And I'd argue there's other Vikings who should probably even be ahead of them. And I'll even argue that we're not – this is kind of goes off athletes a little bit, but the most influential person 
in the history of the Vikings was Bud Grant. Bud Grant, yeah, I would yeah. agree. Yeah, and so when I made this list without athletes, Bud Grant was near the top. Right. And, and so I, I was somebody we mentioned in the in the chat too. It was kind of yeah. like, well, if you're talking just just uh, you know figures, not not athletes. Right. Right. I would agree. Right. But we um, we made this on just athletes, so like Randy Moss is definitely up there, but. I I kind of knock him a little bit because he wasn't here that long. Even though he had a great, great impact, he he just kind of fell into a long list of great players to wear the Viking uniform. I think I think you guys like are getting you, me off my own point for like Joe Maurer right now. <laughs> you can make this argument for like five ready other for a fight for Lindsay I mean, No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not in for fight because, like, like yeah. I mean, like you guys know, like I was, I was champion for Lindsay Whalen. Yeah, I agree with Randy Moss. How can you? I mean, Joe Maurer played for this team for how long? And uh, played for the uh, one team. He yeah. played for this years. He played for the. How do you play for the Minnesota Twins for seventeen years? Yeah. How do you be in Minnesota for 17 years and then still man like you're you're like still here through like high school? Like you know yeah. like when you, if you grow up in Minnesota, you know what Minnesota yeah. is. I've been here for 10 years. I'm ready to go somewhere warm. <laughs> okay? And then how do you stay here in Minnesota? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then yeah. Joe Mauer is still here. They gave him that massive contract. He stayed here through the massive contract. Yeah. Like, how many players – I mean, Albert Pujols, we'll give him that. But, but, I mean, like, you know, how many players do you know sits there, signs a 10-year contract, and then, you know, finishes it out? Yeah. Are you just trying to butter up Giles? What's going on here? I mean, yeah. that's part of it, you know. I mean, yeah. best man duties. I got it. I got it. The you rubes, know? The I mean, Joe Mauer also won MVP. House. So, you know, it's, true. it's not like he's a terrible player. And it's not like, you know, we're just throwing up like, oh – here you go. I mean, that's the one thing you can say against Lindsey Whalen. Lindsey Whalen yeah. never won a WNBA MVP. And neither did Randy Moss. Exactly. Never Fair. won, like, Fair. college MVP, anything like that. Like, they never no. – the top. I mean, Joe Maurer, at least you could say, like, yo, one year he was on the top of his game. Yeah. Not putting anything against Kirby Puckett. Kirby Puckett has the rings. Yeah. Joe Maurer at least won the MVP. And, and to your point earlier, Maurer – one of the best catchers of all time, I think, and yeah. I think that's fair He's, to say. Exactly. Yeah. The only catcher to win, you know, I mean, would have been like five batting titles. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's just obscene records for for a catcher. You know, better than Johnny Bench, who is kind of the pun not intended the benchmark to catchers <laughs> uh, from from a hitting standpoint, especially. Was <laughs> it was not. It was just. <laughs> not. Uh, I, I but, feel like there's been no more of a lightning rod for attention like whether he wanted it or not than joe right. Maurer because oh he certainly didn't <laughs> and, and i think to, to our point again i think randy moss is that lightning rod too i mean when he when he was traded away to oakland there was there was dancing in the streets because mm. some people had grown tired of his antics which at that time you know i was That's probably one of them. i, I kind of understood you know it was his 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 uh prima donna wide receiver bit which was kind of new to people at the time, had gotten a little bit old. I mean, this was this is long before Antonio Brown was completely, you know, going insane and eating his own feces and whatever he's doing now. Uh, mm -hmm. like, totally, totally different, totally different deal. And this was unprecedented. <laughs> at the time. I just want to, for the record, I was not one of those people that wanted Randy Moss gone. <laughs> we moon Wisconsin. That was fucking awesome. And yeah, we should have never traded him. I, uh, I, I'll be honest, I was really into the NFL draft at the time. I was really into uh, where the draft played out and the fact that they got the seventh overall pick for him, I was very excited for. Um, did oh, not see the whole Troy Williamson thing coming. <laughs> uh, that, that really kind of soured the – yeah, that, that kind of made that trade uh, not good, even though he was garbage in Oakland. But um, Yeah, how's your, how's your picks going so far right now for the – I know, not you, Ben, but I'm like yeah. – the Vikings, you know, oh, you guys no, are doing sure. such a great yeah, job. Yeah, they got like a first and a seventh, which is like, what the hell? Is Kirk Cousins on you guys' list? No. <laughs> Most important? Is he no. going to show up here? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> um, okay. So, <laughs> like, you guys had 
you brought up like there's uh, Joe Mauer um, in there, and I, I think kind of going down my list now, like I, I have to give a lot of love to the original twin, Harmon Killebrew, who should be up in this mm. list. Um, we're at number honestly, four. We're doing four. I, do we agree on a number three? No, no, not really. No, oh, we do we're not, not agree on number agree three anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we never. Well, I don't, Eric, are, are you okay with Whalen at number three? Because that vote would. I mean, me and Sam of Moss. It depends how you're looking at this. If we're looking at the masses, I agree. Moss should be there. Okay. If I'm looking at somebody coming into Minnesota, I'd rather have Joe Mauer over there and Lindsey Whalen at four. All right, so seeing as how me and Sam had Moss at three and you're kind of on the fence about everything, we'll put Moss Fine. at three. Moss at yep. three. And I'll apologize to Giles because I gave him KG, so he should be happy. And uh, so then number four, Mauer versus Whalen. Do we do we talk Killebrew in there? Yeah. What do you guys well, should, we, should we have the, Joe Ma- the full Joe Mauer discussion? Because I'm probably the only one that would have any like sort of criticism, right? Oh, I want to hear it. Let's hear it, Sam. Oh, I mean, Joe, bring it. Bring it. I love Joe Maurer and, like, you know, he's a great guy, you know, great role model, whatever, great, whatever. But, like, his career, you know, is just kind of sad. I'm one of those people that acknowledges, like, it should have been, he should have been better, right? And so I agree, you, you guys, you know, he should definitely be on this list. I actually have him right behind Killebrew. I have him at five. Okay. Um, but, you know, I just want to acknowledge since our uh, other friend is in here who <laughs> agrees with me. That you know, <laughs> like his, his MVP season, it was all about right because he's getting paid and he wasn't really producing, and so I think that should just be acknowledged as part of this list. And uh, not trying to dog Joe Mauer, but um, that's fair. That's why I would have him a little bit further down the list. So this is my this is my <laughs> argument uh, in defense of Joe Mauer is after that. 2009 MVP season. He won another batting title in 2010, mm-hmm. uh, and he, you know, he seemed fine to like go on and have a very great career as a catcher. However, he ended up getting concussions in 2013, and it kind of derailed his career. Like it took him a couple years to get back on track he had to change positions i mean that's every catcher though every catcher needs to change positions after a while you can't you, i mean it, it's just so much yeah. wear and tear on the knees yeah what right. if they put him in left field or third base when he was like 22 i forget about <laughs> that people wanted him to go to third base for the longest time i fun fact i was at the one game jamar started in right field <laughs> They were they were that desperate and short on hitters that Joe Maurer started and played the entire game in right field that night. Well, so okay, um, so wow. this was my this is my argument is like concussions like derailed his career so mm-hmm. terribly. Like I kind of put it in the light of if Kirby Puckett had continued to try playing baseball after his eye got fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> like no, you no, probably no, not no, think no. the same of him either. Like it was almost close enough to the point where Joe Mauer probably should have maybe just retired, just because. Like that's why yeah, he had no. to change positions because, like, he gets another concussion. Like that's probably it for him. Mm-hmm. And it it took him so long to kind of figure out, you know, how to come back to hitting. And then what was it, twenty? 17 or 2016 when he had that good hitting year at first base like yeah. it, it looked like the Joe Maurer of old but he was getting old at that point so it, it wasn't going to last anyway so at he yeah. was he was so I, good for the position he played and then it just screwed him up that it makes him to be like a bubble hall of fame player at this point I think he makes the Hall of Fame. Ooh. I think people oh, yeah. in the country well, are I, preaching don't, what he did. I think he makes don't the Hall of Fame. He definitely should. my words, I yeah. want him to make the Hall of Fame. No, I think there's a lot of people that argue that he shouldn't, but those are just kind of you know the, the types that are still mad about his contract. I, I also think, too— Those are the thing, type of people who keep saying— And who cares? Sorry, those are the same the people who bitch right, and right. complain about 
the star players leaving the Twins. Well, then they yeah. signed their best player to a contract and they complain <laughs> right. about it. And then one thing that I think nobody talks about nearly enough, and this is maybe just something that, you know, a drum that I've beaten, Target Field had the exact same dimensions as the Metrodome, except mm-hmm. for left center. Right. Left center was 20 feet deeper, and where did Joe Maurer hit all of his goddamn home runs in the Metrodome? Left center. The left center. And so I just I think that that's something that nobody ever talks about. Justin Morneau, too. Both of those guys hit uh, a just butt pile of home runs the opposite way Justin because Morneau, that's just the skills they had. Justin Morneau would be a surefire player in this list had his career not gotten sidewinded by concussions. Had he not gotten yeah. in the head in Toronto? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I actually, yeah, I actually okay. thought about him for a second, too, Justin Morneau, because that was somebody I, that I, I was watching. He was a very fair player to end up at the end of the list because he won an MVP yeah. as well. So I want to I wanna go back to my the point I was originally trying to make, and we we veered into Joe Maurer somehow. But anyway. This, this is what happens when we start drinking, man. This, this yeah, is I the know. drink. We're, yeah, right? My original we're point was like, on my personal list, I had Harmon Killebrew at number four. You know, and don't get me wrong. Like, I love Joe Maurer. <laughs> very nice, man. I just – I have a little bit of recency bias in the fact that uh, Joe Maurer has been a little bit of a a lightning rod for the Twins in not a great way because a a certain uh, channel on the FM dial has kind (laughs) of run down his career a little bit. Uh, What? I want to argue this for Harmon Killebrew. He was the original Twin and... He is still probably one of the most prominent twins of all time. Sure. Uh, and in the fact that he was incredibly soft spoken, uh, he hit for enormous power that no one else in the history of the twins has ever done. True. Uh, he ended up with like 573 home runs and. You know, yeah. he did it basically with the same the same team, and you know the Twins had that good year of '65, and you know they they just had a lot of really good players that year. But he was he was a beacon for the Twins after he retired as well. Like, yeah, and this is something the Twins get a lot of credit for is the fact that they really uh, have players come back after they retire they uh, yeah. they mentor like they do whatever like Harmon <laughs> Killebrew was that for the twins up until the day he died yeah and the fact that he did that and the fact that he honestly like was the nicest human being you'll ever meet like I was fortunate to meet him once and for the 20 seconds that I had with him he generally made you feel like you were his friend is not something you can say for many, if any, athletes. Yeah. So, Giles, since we're making a list here, uh, and we've got you nice and conflicted at this point, uh, we've got Lindsey Whalen, we've got Joe Maurer, we've got Herman Killebrew. I think they're all fantastic candidates for number four. Um, Do you have Whalen at number four since she was your number three? Yeah, since you've put me into a corner here because the committee <laughs> ruled with Randy Moss at three. I have to go with <laughs> Lindsay Whalen at number four. I, I, I support you as well. I just wanted my like number three to be number three too. All right. So. You were you were with me at just that the rest of the committee had yeah, it's correct. Uh, uh, it's correct. I see where you went there. Me and Sam are bullies. Th- Fine. <laughs> as, as, I think I think Giles's Killerbrew argument was great, but I think he has a personal bias because he met him. So I met him for tw- I met Kirby Puckett for twenty seconds once. Okay, humble Mr. Mr. So why is it he who, won? Who, who's better? <laughs> what? Who's better? Yeah, I'm oh. just kidding. Who's nicer? I, I heard Killerbrew was nicer for what it's worth. I don't Killer. think that that matters in this argument, but. If you um, met Moss, would that change your ranking? No, he'd probably be an ass. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll give Giles, uh, since he's clearly upset about the number three, we'll, yep. we'll put Waylon at four, 
Okay. And I, you know, I would have had her a little bit later, but I, I'm, uh, I understand Giles's argument, and I, I think that there's something to be said for it. Number five, we're talking Maurer versus Killebrew, or, or a name that I had that we haven't even brought up yet that I think is probably, uh, or not probably, definitely uh, decades before our time, George Mikan. Ooh, is a name that we haven't talked about. A guy who brought a lot of titles to this town, and granted Mm. it's for a franchise that moved, but was really, I mean, he was kind of the LeBron or the MJ of his time. He was. Really a guy that um, revolutionized his position in the NBA, and and probably, you know, I'd like to give him some credit here, because I honestly, I don't, he doesn't get nearly enough credit for what he did for the game. No. You think of you think of like the best centers on the history of the NBA. Like you think there's Kareem, there's Shaq, right? There's God, who else am I? Ewing. Like all Bill of Russell. these guys literally followed the trail that Ewing. started. Come on now. What? <laughs> you gotta include Bill Russell too. Always. Right. I mean, Bill Russell yeah, is the Bill best. Russell. Come on now. Right. These guys Will all. Chamberlain? Let's go. These guys all <laughs> followed the path that George Mikan started. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, he really revolutionized the big man in the NBA for sure. And so, I don't know, do you guys think that, that he deserves to be somewhere middle of this list? Are we, like, are we dealing with too much recency bias to put him in yeah. the middle of this list somewhere? It I depends on who you talk to, I'm sure. It makes sense to put him on the list just because... He deserves to be on this list. I had right. my honorable mentions. I feel That's like it. because of... Mostly because of the recency bias. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not something somebody who was on the yeah. forefront of my mind. Oh, for sure, for I, sure. Since I'm not from Minnesota, I yeah, you know, I made the list of who are you know for me. Even though I'm look, I'm looking at his Wikipedia page. He's from Juliet, Illinois, hometown baby. Shut down again. <laughs> I mean, like, still. I mean, he probably still wouldn't be on my Chicago list. So, I mean, <laughs> well, but okay. So I don't. I just I, a recency bias. I totally get, but like. I mean, you're talking about influential Minnesota athletes, and and nobody, yeah. to your point, nobody under the age of like freaking sixty is going to even remember knows. him yeah. at this yeah. point. But he made the Lakers into the Lakers, and and that's not a the small NBA. Game. I mean, it was right. Yeah, well, no, sure. soul, you know, and he was like their yeah. first marquee guy. Well, he was he was with the Lakers before they were even in the NBA. It was like the NBLL or something. Right. Yeah. All right. Can I throw? I'm going to throw somebody out here. Another I, like, I like I like this Joe Mikan, but I'm gonna throw somebody out here that we not talk. Why are you gonna Why are you gonna steal that from me? <laughs> Come on, Sam. Hey but man, that, I had to catch up with the whiskey, and uh, I might have overdone. It. <laughs> that's literally who I was gonna bring up was is John Randall. Uh, oh. I I don't know. I have Chris you know Carter what? In my I, I, I can talk about him later in the list. I feel I like bet. right now, I don't, I don't know if John Randall is that. I mean, certainly, not, I'm going to say this. Okay. If you made a list of, and this may for another day, if you make a list of like the 10 most underappreciated Minnesota yeah. sports yeah. athletes, yeah. Yep. John yeah. Randall is number one. <laughs> He's definitely our guy because, you know. Yeah, it was right in our wheelhouse. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. I had to bring him down a list because I got thrown out of one of his bars. So, you know, he got, he got <laughs> pushed down a little bit. So, All right. We have Waylon at four. What? At five, we're talking Maurer. We're talking Killebrew. We've mentioned George Mikan. Uh, what do you guys think? I, I think I think Mike – I think – I think – I would we got Garnett, Maurer. Puckett. Garnett, Puckett, Moss. Yeah. I think it has to go Mikan. Well, we had Waylon too. We, we gave Waylon. Waylon. I welcome. think it has to go Waylon, Mike, and Mauer. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Giles? Honestly, like, so we we have KG, we have Puckett, we've got Moss and Waylon. Like, I mean, honestly, Mauer and Waylon have like the same credentials, like homegrown people. Right. Kind of, like, yeah. Honestly, Damn. like, oh. I'd I'd probably put. It's really tough. Like the George Mikan argument, like was something I did not think about here, but it's yep. really like lingering in my head. But I'd still probably have to go killer, and then George Mikan, like right after. They're so close. Agreed. But yeah. I just give a little bit more credence to Killebrew because and you don't have Mauer in there. He's probably right after. Okay. Like I'd not again, like. 
if if it wasn't for like the negativity that came late in his career, that's like, true. Joe Mauer's probably really up there. He's I not mean, like that negativity is only because we lived that negativity. Like we were part of that. <laughs> Well, we like, I have all. never ever <laughs> said a damned <laughs> negative thing about him. There's a Sam, what, Sam, what do you think? There's uh, a shrine in my five. basement to him. <laughs> I mean, in Killer Bruce's defense, Sam he has a street. Le- in Killer Bruce's defense, he has a street lead from Sam. all of America. For the record, I do have uh, Killer Bruce four and Mauer five, so I did okay. put Killer Bruce ahead of Mauer. Okay. I can hear that. I, I can hear that. I, I mean, Kilbert is certainly more fondly remembered, and, and nostalgia is a part of that. And when he died, they changed their damn jerseys for a number of seasons, which was, as me and Giles will tell you, which was fantastic. No, it was. So we're going so, with... So, so Killebrew at five, everyone's fine with that? I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm fine with it. I, I think that there's plenty of great arguments to be made for that. Um, and then number six... We're still talking Mauer. We're still talking Mike. And uh, is there any other names that we need to pile in there? I've I've got I a couple. Have Paul of Molitor is that way too high? Uh, I I didn't have him in my top ten because he didn't play here that long. But he's Minnesota's from St. Paul. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I, I just I don't know how much he. It's kind of like the Dave Winfield thing, where it's like, yeah, he's from here and he was great. Don't get me wrong, Hall of Famer. I, I just I don't know how much that means to people when they didn't play here. All right. Um, you know what? You just so talked me things- into uh, replacing either him or Tarkenton with George Mikan. That's fair. So numbers. I mean, we're not. We're not talking. We're still not talking about John Randall here. I mean, John Randall <laughs> okay. was pretty legit. <laughs> well, so I, I, defensive I think- presence. The dude was scary. You couldn't see his eyes. Come on, man. <laughs> like that dude was. You said there. Have you seen the documentary? Like we seen like the eye black, him? as we know it. Dude, that dude was scary, man. <laughs> Shoot, I'm watching him on TV, and I'm just like, you need to just cover up the TV. Like, I couldn't see him. Like, you know, he, he changed the NFL rules on Eye Black. Oh, right, right, exactly. <laughs> Defensive presence. I was looking up stats on him. He had 15 sacks in one year. Like, yeah, 15 uh, sacks nowadays. Like, okay, that makes sense because you can't hold anybody. It's like the it's like the right, NBA right. now. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. you touch him, it's holding. But like, 15 well, sacks back in the day. Line. I mean, he's great, but he's he's in my honorable mentions. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know that I would have yeah. that to be completely honest. I, I think that that Vikings team was – John Randall, underappreciated, as Giles said, incredibly underappreciated. But, I, I mean, those defenses were never really all that terrifying. He was it. I mean, it kind of it was kind of almost the KG effect where he didn't have a whole lot of help. Yeah, but, I mean, like, you sit there and you look at, like, like the Green Bay, like, defense. Like, yeah, it's not that – it's not that, like, you know, scary. But then all of a sudden you see Randy White on the other side. Or, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's kind of like, yeah, okay, that's a big difference. Fair. Anyway, go ahead. All right, so number uh, number six then, Maurer, Mikan. Talk about John Randall's in there. Um, I, got I had a name that, that we hadn't talked about yet, and, and you know, I think his off-the-field stuff and just him in general kind of bump him down. But Adrian Peterson – I had him at I had him at nine. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. that uh, you know, just just what he did, what he accomplished when he was here was up there. I, I don't know. I think I think I would still put Maurer and Mike and probably easily ahead of him. him. So six. I think Adrian Peterson deserves to be on the list, though. Oh, for sure. So yeah. number six, Maurer or Mike and what do you guys think? Mike and Mike and that's fair. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Mike. And. Yeah, yeah. I, even though Maurer was my number three, I I, I see your argument. You know, okay. that's my bad. Thanks for calling me on that, guys. Like, <laughs> I'm, and no, I'm no, a basketball I, guy too. You know, I, and I, I think it's interesting when you get together and, and and Mike in 100% suffers from recency bias because nobody oh, ever yeah. saw him play. Well, it's yeah. like you sit there, you're talking about like he, a lie that's on play is freaking Sid Hartman. I just think of the fact like he probably <laughs> couldn't play now. You know, wow. what I mean? like he oh no, wow. wow. play now. You know, right? I, 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 obviously, you know, you put him into today's game and he'd get eaten alive, but. I mean, he also – you have to – I mean, he did revolutionize his own position too. But so. there's a bunch of those players that no, you sit right. there and – there's a bunch of those players like we sit back in the day when they used to be like the Minnesota – yeah, back in that old Minnesota team. Oh, yeah. yeah we, mean, we don't realize how great they were or how good they were, you know, compared to the stats, compared to everybody else. But Right, right, right. We sit there and look at the teams now and it's like you're – I mean, you're no Kobe. Come on. 
All right. <laughs> okay. So we have at number one, I think we've agreed Kevin Garnett is number one. I gave you Kevin Garnett, yes. Okay. We, we have. That's my guy. <laughs> Kevin okay. Garnett is one. Kirby Puckett's two. Uh, then we have one Randy B. Moss at three. Uh, Lindsey Whalen at four. Was it George Kill Mikan at five? Killebrew at five. Killebrew at five. And then Mikan at six. Mikan at six. And now we are going to go on number seven. Uh, and I'm I'm actually good with slotting in Joe Maurer here at number seven, figuratively. Uh, he has to be on the list. He has to be on the top fitting. of the list. It's so as high fitting. as we can get him. Yeah, I think that he's there. And, and a point that I made it as we were on the break here, Joe Maurer, not – indirectly kind of got a stadium built in this town. And yeah. and I think that there's there's something to be said for that. I mean, obviously he would, you know, he was very early in his twins career when they agreed to build Target Field, but there was a lot of hope and a lot of uh, excitement around that team and Joe Maurer was very much a part of that. So I I, I don't know. There's a lot of things you can say about Joe Maurer, but I think that uh I think him in at 7 is is a, is a good spot for him. What do you I think, yeah, I think he has to be on this top 10 list. I mean, I don't oh, yeah, think you can have sure. this top ten list without Joe Maurer, and I think right. I mean at seven we had some great names there. So at the top six, so I mean at seven, I'm I good with that. I talked the other day. We're like his first ten seasons combined. This is right before the concussions hit. He was a catcher, and his combined batting average was like three twenty three. It's amazing. That's just obscene. That's he was a fantasy insane. monster, dude. I I wanted him every year in fantasy baseball, every year. <laughs> <laughs> top, top was it first or second round each year? I mean, that's, yeah, it, that's gold compared to other catchers. He, he was just he was so far. He was such a, a you know such a, a above above the rest of the crowd. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming Giles is okay with that. No, I completely agree. <laughs> um, All right, so then on to number eight. Um, you know, we've we've thrown around some names. Uh, John Randall is a name that's thrown out there. I threw out Adrian Peterson a little while ago. I don't know where he slots in exactly. Uh, a couple other names I want us to think about. Uh, I have one. We haven't talked. What? I have one. I will. Okay. I can make the argument for. Okay. Uh, a couple names we haven't talked. We haven't talked about. I we haven't talked hockey yet. Okay. Which is fair. It's a uh, hockey podcast. Well, it is a hockey podcast technically. Uh, we have go figure. Hockey, hockey has the most checkered history. <laughs> yeah, very history. But I do think, and and we talked about this on our podcast this past week, uh, the one before Bruce with with the great Nate Wells. Neil Broden has an incredible resume. Yep, incredible, and I, and I do think he He's belongs on my this list. Place. Is he the most talented hockey player to ever come out of Minnesota? Probably not, but I think his resume is absolutely incredible, and so I think he needs to be somewhere in this list. Um, another name, too, uh, along the lines of, of Eric's uh, love for John Randall, I think Jim Marshall is probably a name that, that we probably haven't brought up. You know, kind of a representative of the Purple People Eaters. Put him in the Hall of Fame, please. <laughs> right. Right. So, I don't know. What, what, who do you, who else did you have, Giles? Would Jim Marshall be the number one? I'm sorry. One John, John Randall's in the Hall of Fame. Come on. It's Would true. Jim Marshall yeah. be the number one 70s Vikings out of all those guys? I think John Randall's in the Hall of Fame. You know, it's funny. Like I think about this a lot because I, I feel like people more like think of Fran Tarkington and how like of a much That's of fair. a big figure he was, but he also like left the Vikings for a little bit of time. So yeah. I kind of dock him for that, but that had more sure. to do with the fact he had issues with uh, Norm Van Brocklin. Right. Um, but I. Honestly, like out of the '70s Vikings, like it's probably going to be like Jim Marshall or Carl Eller for me. Yeah, yeah. Like just because like that defense was so good every was year. But then Alan you got to put the defense in the Hall of Fame. Alan Page love. Yeah, yeah Alan Alan Page Page I mean, are you gonna put are you gonna put the defense in this list? It's tough because it's it's tough to split up those those guys those purple That's people. Leaders. But John Randall by himself was a wrecking crew. <laughs> and he was scary. Come on, man. He was, really was scary as shit. And he was killing people. He was killing quarterbacks. Nobody could stop that dude. That dude was so much fun to watch. Like, you sit there, you're like, John Ra Oh, shit. John Randall's on the other team? Fuck, we're screwed. Like, come on. 
Dude. All right, so number eight. What what do you guys what's your feeling, guys? Well, and this this was gonna be it. like someone I wanna bring up, like I, I think he's he's on my list. Uh, Ten years of the Vikings. The I mean, I agree. John Randall should be here <laughs> at number seven. I agree. It's number, eight, Eric. It's number eight, try to keep up. Oh, number eight. I'm sorry, number eight. It's I think right. the drinks are starting to take over for me. I'm sorry. Uh, guys. Yeah. I have like Chris Carter and Adrian Peterson in the seven eight range. Yeah. Who do you have, Giles? What down my list here? I, I have seven-time Pro Bowler. <laughs> I think we're just gonna put John Randall in like ten. <laughs> just just to, to get like, Eric to shut up, yeah. Make him stop. No, I, <laughs> I somebody I think we need to talk about is uh, Tony Oliva, just because. Uh, um, it's a good name. He. Yeah. You know, he was an incredible hitter in his day. And, like, he wasn't the most, like, recognized figure of the Twins at that time. Like, Mm Armin Killebrew, obviously, who we have on the list, was. But I I, I get Tony O in here because he's been so much of an ambassador for the Twins and the state of Minnesota uh, since he retired it. It's hard not to put him in here just because of the impact that he has had. Yeah, so, that's fair. Talk about he, a Hall of Fame snub. Oh, my God. Right. Like well, you know who's in the Hall of Fame? <laughs> Rod Crew. <laughs> Rod Crew is in the Hall of Fame. Got me. I got, I got nothing there. But, you know, it is. Don Randall's still in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Oh, that's good stuff. Uh, I mean, the bullshit NFL Hall of Fame, if we're going to be completely honest. Oh, yeah. come on. Whatever. Yeah. NFL Hall of Fame is kind of janky. No, I mean, the NFL Hall of Fame has it right. Fame. They put the right players in the Hall of Fame. All Barry of Bonds is still not waiting yeah, for the MLB to get in the Hall, Hall of Fame. Barry Bonds is still one his... of the best hitters ever to play in the MLB. Yeah. Roger Clemens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I understand what you're saying, but. <laughs> I mean, you may like, be misremembering a few facts, Eric. You can, <laughs> you can honestly put anyone we've thrown out here at number eight. Like it's That's true. no, I, I think there's. I think it gets really jumbled uh, right around this area. It gets super jumbled, in fact. So, um, I, I don't know. I, I still want to have a, a hockey representative. I think Neil Broughton is resume is incredible. Um, yeah, he he needs to be on the list somewhere. So yeah. since I'm not a hockey guy, should we have many, uh, we got three we got three more spots to go, right? We have the Madonna yeah. conversation. No, Madonna, you know, he Madonna didn't have enough time here. Vastly, vastly <laughs> overblown by Minnesota sports sports fans. He was here for like three or four years. That's yeah. it. I mean, if you want to make a Dallas Stars list, have at it. But Mike Madonna was here for like three or four years, and people continue to slob his knob to the point where he got a handshaking job with the Minnesota wild this season. And quite frankly, to people who know, you know, the history of the North stars, it's kind of embarrassing. Like he meant nothing to the North stars compared to guys like Neil Broughton, guys like Dino Cicerelli. Mm-hmm. I mean, even guys like, uh, John Casey, Don Beaupre, uh, you know, JP Parisi. Yeah. JP Parisi. Like, Mighty ducks too, though. <laughs> oh, okay. oh. So, you got it hey. there. Sam. All right, you. That was a pull there. right there. That that's, might seal. That might seal it right there. That's uh, that's kind of a low blow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's got us there. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Still, okay. okay. We no, got no, 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 no. You right want there. an argument? <laughs> you want an argument for number eight? Here you go. Here's your argument, Gordon Bombay. <laughs> yeah. We're talking. We're talking about athletes, Giles, not uh, not figures. He was a great coach. Um, his, his Adam Banks. career was obviously Adam Banks. cut short by by that that cheap shot in the minors. We we know about this. <laughs> All right, I, so I'm I'm gonna use executive privilege here, like Trump, and I'll, I'll put Neil Broughton in number eight. Ooh, okay. uh, and and let's move on to number nine because we're, right. we're 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 burning up Tom Schreier time right now. Uh, <laughs> so number nine. We've got a lot of folks. Uh, John Randall's name has been mentioned 37,000 times. Um, Jim Marshall, Alan Page, Carl Eller, uh, Fran Tarkington, 
Tony Oliva, Adrian Peterson, Chris Carter, Chris Carter. It's true. Uh, is there anybody that what, what, I'll, I'll get? Who's the number nine for for you, Sam? Um, you know what? I will edit. I've been editing my list as we've gone because you know whatever. Right. I'll, I'll bump Lindsay Whalen up to number nine. I had her at number ten. Well, she's already on the list, so you can't take. I her know. Out. I'm just saying. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> who are you guys who hasn't been used? So I got I got somebody we haven't mentioned yet. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, Lindsay Vaughn. Oh, uh, okay. I, so I, I know I know it's not somebody who we would necessarily look at, and this is somebody who might be just mentioned in the honorable mentions, mm-hmm. but somebody who was a Minnesota Minnesota born athlete has won Olympic gold. Yeah. For her sport, somebody who's recognized throughout basically all of the sports world. So somebody yeah. you say Lindsey Vaughn and they can go, oh, I know who that is. She won Olympic medals or Olympic, yeah. yeah, Olympic medals, you know, for skiing. Sure. And Minnesotans love a, a local story. I, I mean, I, not, I don't want to downplay the Olympics and and right. the, the sports that they have, but I, the, like that's I a big deal once every four years. Yep. Agreed. Um, I, and, I, I can understand that. I mean, I mean, as far as the Minnesota athlete, I mean, that's somebody you can be proud of to be like, hey, Lindsey Vaughn, that's a Minnesotan right there. You know, that's somebody who's, who's really? a great athlete, who's won Olympic gold, who represented our country, who has done great things for us. If you guys want me to go really, really off the rails on this list, a Minnesota athlete that has not been mentioned who can make an argument for number fucking one on this list is Rick goddamn Flair. So we can talk. Oh about that shoot! If you guys, yeah, want. Ric Flair makes number ten. I agree with that. <laughs> I can go behind that. I mean, you can put him on the list. Yeah, I, 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 I can I, get behind Ric Flair. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> All right. So who'd you have at nine then, Sam? Sorry. Um, I had um in my edited list here. I bumped up one of my uh, honorable mentions, mm-hmm. and I put um Kevin McHale up here. Okay, as a player, yeah, 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 for sure. Again, I know it's going against some of the things you guys are going with your lists, but just to throw another name out there from Minnesota. Yeah, that's and true. Then, yeah I know he had whatever, not a great uh, front <laughs> office run. Yeah, but he kind of so, so, did his yeah. way a little bit here, for sure. Um, Eric, I'm assuming you're going with John Randall at number nine. Yes, please. Okay, Giles, <laughs> who you got for number nine? <laughs> Um, I, I mean, I, I have to put Tony O here at number nine. Like, I just. Honestly, I Tony O do. was on my list. I just didn't have a great argument to put Tony O there. But like, I like, I guess I wasn't here to experience what Tony O was all about. Yeah, none of us were, so that's fair. But, you know, okay, here's another name that like we don't talk about because nobody outside of Sid Hartman is old enough to remember him. But. <laughs> Bronco Nagurski was That's very true. legendary yeah. status. Great, great, great ad. And he he did it at the University of Minnesota before he went to the professional ranks. Uh, yep. But nobody really talks about him because it was in the it was forever ago history. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, that's a that's a great great ad to the list. Um, what number are we on? Number nine. What was number eight? Neil Broughton. Okay. They had to put in a hockey player. No, yeah, I understand that. I mean, honorable mention anyways that we can throw in, the, at least since we're throwing out names for the end of this list. As I mentioned before we started recording, you got to talk about the 1980 Miracle Team, right? And Herb Brooks. Well, Neil, Neil Broughton was on the Neil Broughton was on the team. Yep, he was on the team. So I think he's a great representative of yeah. it because he was, he was one of the bigger stars of that team, honestly. There was a lot of kids from – New England that were very good on that team, but Neil Broden was one of the one of the better players. Yeah, if we're making a list of like the Minnesota sports figures, like Herb Brooks is probably in the top three. Yeah, he was number one on oh, our yeah. hot list with the bullet, obviously. I think I, I think even like, I would agree, even I would agree with that right? with Herb Brooks. Yeah, I'm all about that. Yep. All right, so number nine, uh John Randall. <laughs> I mean, right. I, you know, Adrian Peterson, Chris Carter. This, this podcast has lived up, to, lived up to its off the rails name, I think, a little bit as we get deeper on this list. I feel like I feel like Adrian Peterson should be on this list because 
of what he accomplished, of how good he was, and how he took a Minnesota team that was just and eh, and the he just changed, decade. He changed decade. them. He changed them, and he was winning. He was winning rushing titles. Like he was yeah. a great individual player. And then how many great, people rush for two thousand yards in NFL history? Like four. great individual player. Like you know, and then he just and then he just messed up like just. Everything that he had as far as going for <laughs> Minnesota, like lore, like he yeah. just screwed it all up. And yeah, it was like, yeah. you could have been, you could have been sh- like Adrian Peterson could have been top four in this list. In my opinion, he fucked it up when he fumbled the ball, like the two yard line. In. Okay. First of all, you knew Adrian Peterson fumbled the ball coming out of college. <laughs> that wasn't anything. That was like, I don't know why you were shocked about that. Like when you saw that, like, it was like, oh my God, Adrian Peterson shuffles. Like, I wasn't the ball? Shocked. I was you should have known. I'm sad. Yeah. Like, I, think it happened. He was, I think he was literally just too dumb to not grip the football with 100% of his strength at all times. Like, I think that was honestly his problem with turnovers. I was all about when they, like, gave him, like, the 10-pound sandbags, like, a training camp <laughs> the next year. <laughs> all right. No, I, I, I think Adrian Peterson's one of the great – should be one of the great Vikings of all time. Like, no, he no, should I, be. I think, I think just at the end of the career – like what happened and how he left the team. Like it's just too much of a, yeah, this is too much for him to be like, okay, the sw- the switch I can, right. I can send you as a top 10. Like I have Adrian Peterson as number 10, but it's number 10. Like, it's like, okay, Adrian yeah. Peterson. No, that's fair. And as what far are, as pure athletes go, I mean, he might be, right. you know, top two, mm-hmm. um, just pure athleticism. All right. I don't know that we're ever going to decide on a number nine and number 10, but I think we've done, on a good amount of name throwing out there. So uh, I think people can kind of make up their nine and 10 as they see fit. Or, are you guys all right with that? Yeah. Because I don't know what our runtime is right now, but I'm John sure. Randall. John Randall. I thought you were going to give it to Giles and give him Tony O. Well, no, we have to, we have to have a nine and 10 for the definitive list. Okay. Get, put Tony right. O on there. Let's, let's do Tony O at, at nine and uh, John Randall at 10. Woo. <laughs> And it's purely because we've been drinking, and Eric is very emphatic. So good, <laughs> dude. And he's in the Hall of Fame. Come on, you got to give him and that. He's been arguing John Randall since like four. So he, he's in the Hall of Fame, man. I'm saying. <laughs> All right, so that's our list. All right, so here's a list, uh, just for those uh, catching up. Uh, number one, Kevin Garnett. Two, Kirby Puckett. Three, Randy Moss. Four, Lindsey Whalen. Five, Harmon Killebrew. Six, George Mikan. Seven, Joe Maurer. Eight, Neil Broughton. Nine, Tony Oliva. Ten, John Randall. All right. And I think we've got a metric F ton of honorable mentions. Can I add one about. more to the honorable mention? What, what you got? Maya Moore. Oh, yeah. Maya yeah. Moore's good. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Just, I just want to put her name out there because Maya Moore, I mean. Yeah. Smart yeah. Justice. Yeah. 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 No, I'm I'm with you on that. The coach, right? Jim oh, P. Well, we're not talking. We're not talking about the coaches. Yeah, like that's what happened, Sam. Try to right. well, I know, but we're honorable mentions. We mentioned Brooks. <laughs> we mentioned uh, Chris uh, Carter. Chris yeah. Carter has to be an honorable mention. Chris uh, Carter. Rod Carew. Yeah, or Dante or Culpepper. Carter. No. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. He made a Madden cover. Okay. So, I mean, that's legit. <laughs> and then he died. <laughs> Jesus Ooh. Christ. Rand, how about Randall Cunningham? Is that is that fair? The, no. 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 Okay. That was one no. season, Eric. What, yeah, what do you George. Want? All right. I was trying. <laughs> George. <laughs> George. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jeff fucking George. Um, and, yeah, I, I'll throw in a couple honorable mentions since this is a hockey podcast. We had uh, Phil Housley and Zach Breezy on our list last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're they're no. decent enough to be honorable mentions. I don't know if they – Ever did much to change the landscape, but um, Gabrick. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, Garrick was certainly the most talented player to probably play in Minnesota. Um, I probably wouldn't disagree with that statement. So, I mean, if if I had to pick a wild player, it's Miko Koivu. Yeah, I mean, his 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 time here, but I mean, he's kind of he's definitely got the Joe Maurer effect, where he is not a popular guy amongst about half the fans. Right. But we have Joe Maurer at seven on list, so. Well, yeah, because fuck those people. Are there any other Timberwolves that are even close? I think Cat could. Cat, baby. Cat could be Cat. one day. 
could Cat. do it by the end of his career. I don't think he's there yet, obviously. I think he very much could. Um, but that's that's a that's a tough road to hope. I think I think it's a different NBA where I think if he played at the same time as Kevin Garnett, this this uh Wolves team might have been a playoff team. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like yeah. now, oh. I mean, when you got LeBron oh. and Kawhi sitting there in the West <laughs> along with you. Oh no. my god. He just I don't, just think of this. Think of the Wolves in two thousand four, but at center, Carl Anthony Towns. Right, exactly. Dude, would, uh, and, and back in 2004, <laughs> nobody could think about a center that could shoot threes. You got a center that stepped out. Twos. Yeah. Right, exactly. Like, Arvita Sabonis was the last center that I could think of that shot threes back in, like, the early, like, late 90s, you know? Arvitas? Uh, yeah, no, right? Your v- no, it's Arvitas. Arvitas. Arvitas <laughs> Sabonis. Like, <laughs> seri- like seriously? Like yo, he had a nice, he had a nice stroke straight, straight ahead, three, boom. It was a line drive, but he made it. All right, uh, I think they can do it, Giles. We, uh, I'm sure we're somewhere around like two and a half hours or something like that. <laughs> Tom's furious. I mean, who just joined the chat? Some unnamed person, Andrew. Who is that? I want, I, I think this is Sean. Is that Sean? I think it's uh, Sean. I was like, who's Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, so we can wrap it up. Are we still recording, Giles? Yeah, we're still we're recording. That? Okay. All right. I mean yeah. I've thrown I've thrown time to the wind at this point. I don't care. Okay. Like, well you've edited it, so have fun. I, I mean I only have to edit when we pause. Okay. But otherwise, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the list. So that was that was fun. Um, at surprisingly, not as much profanity as I thought we were gonna have. Yeah, oh, shit, really bitch, cock, motherfucking dick. dick. Thank you, Eric. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that's because our our other friend didn't show up. So that's we, very true. Carol would have filled in the void. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he would have put in so much profanity. That's a mere <laughs> mention of Joe Mauer's name. <laughs> or Lindsay Whalen. That would have oh, yeah. yeah. brought out the worst. You guys might dodge a bullet on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah. Well that uh can do it uh for us. That was our first attempt at the Off the Rails podcast. Uh we if this does okay, we'll probably try it again next month, and we'll we'll see what happens, and we'll debate whatever the hell we damn well please. Michael uh, Jordan for all. <laughs> yeah, the last dance, baby. <laughs> Doing yeah. ESPN ad. We yeah. look forward to that tomorrow. Um, yeah, uh, thank you to Eric and Sam for uh, joining us in this uh, debate. This it was, was full of hot hot takes. Yes. Um, <laughs> thanks for inviting. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, guys. Yeah. Thanks uh, for having you me. can follow Ben and I on Twitter at Ben Remington at Giles Farrell. Podcast is at G A T G Wild Podcast. Uh, listen to this otherwise fine production on iTunes, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Google Play, Spotify, whatever the hell you subscribe to podcasts on. Uh, zonecoverage.com is where we occasionally write uh, and all the podcasts are there as well so uh, for Eric, Sam, Ben and myself we will chat with you again next week later thank you for listening to another episode of the Gill and the Goaltender podcast It's not resiliency. You're making it sound like we're good. That's all. I'm done. <laughs>